Did uh, Joe Biden, with 19 others in the race, uh, muddy the waters or distinguish himself uh, with some of those comments? <clears throat> Let's get the read from former Republican presidential candidate Steve Forbes, Democratic strategist Nathan Rubin, and our own Kat Tim. Kat, what do you think? Well, first of all, I could not agree with you more that it was a very dark and ominous message. He's connected with Obama because he was his vice president, but Obama was saying hope and change, and this is more fear and dread. Obama had the more message of imagine what could happen and the future we could have if I were president, and this is him saying there won't be a future if me or a Democrat is not president. And that's interesting to me because in 2016, the Democrats, Hillary Clinton, her campaign made things about attacking Trump and the doom and gloom situation if Trump were to be elected. And they didn't win. And it seems like Joe Biden's announcement, at least, was doing the same thing. We should stress that there were some uplifting, you know, uh, pieces of video and uh, photographs in, in that piece. But I think it's sort of coming out the gate, Nathan, seeing as the vice president at the time was very critical of, of let's say, Donald Trump's inaugural address, deemed it dark and, and a little bit too much so. Um, it, it just seemed to be a, a clumsy way to get off. What do you think? Well, I think you're absolutely right to point out that historically past presidential candidates have chosen optimism. And like you said, they were successful. Um, but I also think Joe Biden has a point when he's trying to paint such a bleak picture of the current uh, state of politics. When you look at what's actually going on in terms of judicial independence, congressional checks and balances, um, you know, the idea that Congress should have oversight over the executive branch, uh, this current administration doesn't necessarily believe in those ideas. Them. So to well, say that, that, but it takes two to tango, too, right? I mean, I guess, Steve, what I'm asking you is, is the message alone. Ronald Reagan, of course, went after Jimmy Carter and his stewardship of the economy and the malaise thing and all. But of course, there in, in his Statue of Liberty announcement, when the full campaign kicked off, he was trying to say, I think we can return to higher angels, better angels, and all of that. Should that have been the theme here? Or does it differ depending on the times? No, I think uh, Biden made a huge mistake. I think it's a classic case, Neil. He's running four years too late, like, like Elizabeth Warren. If they'd run in 2016, I think both of them would have had a shot not only mm -hmm. winning the nomination, but certainly Biden winning the general election. But people want to hope for the future. They know things are bad now. A lot of people think, feel that the president isn't up to the office and all that kind of yeah. thing. But Biden is being the senior candidate when the senior candidates there should say i've seen a lot we're going to come out of it here's how well, you know you also instead galvanizing instead your pandering. base right the galvanizing the base i think and to nathan's point you know this hits it's home with them this is the dissatisfaction with donald trump and its stewardship and that this is going to be a different guy in charge. Right, absolutely. And there are people out there, you see articles all the time about people who are really stressed out or struggling with anxiety when they think about the fact that Trump is president. And we haven't really seen that kind of thing with any other president before where it's people are saying they're going to therapists because of who the president is. But I still think that it should have been a little more inspirational and in trying to inspire people than trying to just make people afraid which is clearly what he was going for. If Democrats don't win, the future of the country is fundamentally changed. That's a pretty extreme thing to say. You know, it's interesting that we're also learning that uh, Biden today had called Anita Hill, of course, had rented charges against Clarence Thomas, uh, to, to say that he regretted how she had to endure the Clarence Thomas hearings. He's trying to make right from past incidents that are controversial with the Me Too movement and some members of the party. Is that going to work? Is this tone, for example, to say this guy, President Trump, is a problem? I'm not going to be that problem. I will acknowledge a mistake or are we getting too convoluted here? Well, I think one of the assets that the Obama campaign looked at in 2008 was his long history in Congress and the Senate. But now it's almost looking like a liability when you look at the 1991 Anita Hill hearings or the 1994 uh, crime bill or even in 1996 when he voted against same sex marriage. The progressives, the base of the Democratic Party are looking at his history and saying, wait a second, is that who I want to lead us into the future? And a lot of people well, are having second thoughts. Does that rule out white males, especially older white males in well, this party? I don't know if it rules out white males, I think Mayor Pete Buttigieg, to your point, Steve, is really striking an optimistic tone in that kind of generational divide where he's saying, I can lead us into a new progressive era. That has a lot of clout, I think, with a lot of people. But, you know, Steve, you think about it, it's not as if President Trump is a cockeyed optimist. He spends a great deal of time, <laughs> you know, grilling his opponents say. and just saying, you know, what he did even today about Joe Biden. That's hardly positive, uplifting or even presidential. Uh, he there was attacking, attacking an opponent. And I think when the campaign really gets underway, you're going to see a very different tone. Do you want to go back to the sluggishness of the past 10 years or the uh, 
But do you hope the personal swipes have any, any, any point in the campaign? I think anything can be overdone. Okay. And, and in terms of Biden, though, given his age, he's got to turn that into an asset. And that's where he's got to make the case. Why am I better than all of these others? Young people, optimistic people. What do I bring to the table other than I've been around a while that should make you Real trust quickly, me? Guys, with... Is it Biden's nomination to lose? What do you think? I think it's really hard to tell at the beginning. He does have a larger share of the votes in polls, but that share shrinks when there's an undecided option added. A lot of the polls where he has the largest lead, there's no undecided option, so it could just be name recognition for Nathan, a lot of people. Think? I do not think it's his to lose. I think he needs to prove himself to the base wow. of the Democratic Party. This is a primary, not a general. You're right, Steve. And because of the proportional representation they're now having on delegates, Everyone's going to be a factor in that convention. And unless he wins yep. decisively at the beginning, he's going to get crushed at the convention. He'll never survive a second. All right. Election. And that says it could be multiple votes. It won't be yes. a first ballot, right? Yep. That'd be kind of cool, right? <laughs> for journalists. Just for drama. Yeah, it depends. All right. I love drama here.